My lords, ladies and gentlemen, it is an honour and a privilege to welcome you all to Crufts Best in Show 2014. Celebrating the 350th anniversary, on parade by Captain Hugh Williams, Director of Music, the Fanfare Team, from the Band of Her Majesty's Royal Marines, Commando Training Centre, Limston. The culmination of four days judging. Over the past four days, almost 22,000 dogs have been entered at the greatest dog show in the world. Delighted to welcome our judge for best in show, accompanied by the chairman of the Kennel Club, Professor Steve Dean, our judge for best in show, Crofts 2014, Mr. Jack Bisper. So there we have Jack Bispham being escorted into the centre of the ring by Professor Steve Dean, Chairman of the Kennel Club. He's our judge for today for Best in Show. He considers it the number one judging appointment Best in the world. And so now we're going to welcome our group winners in the, winner the order that they were the qualified group. for this so final well. event. From the working group, the Rob Byler, sent here to the final by Judge Frank Kane. The winner of the pastoral group also on Thursday. <laughs> Judge best of the group by Valerie Foss. Towards saying it all there. The winner of the Terrier group. It's a lovely wire haired fox terrier judged in the group on Friday by Gerald Morris. This absolute giant, the winner of the Hound Group, also on Friday, Michael Quinney's choice there, the Irish Wolfhound. It was an absolutely incredible day here yesterday at Crafts 2014. The winner from the Utility Group, judged by Kenneth Sinclair, the Standard Poodle. The spectacular standard poodle from the utility group, the second group judged on Friday by Ken Sinclair. It was full to the rafters all day long here yesterday in the arena at Crofts 2014. Our second of the group winners from yesterday, judged by Rene Sporter Willis, the winner from the toy group, the Pomeranian. So we have seen the Giants, but the winner of the toy group 
this tiny little Pomeranian sent here by Ronnie Store Willis. It's a long way round, isn't it? It well certainly done. is a long way for that little thing. And to make the seven complete, the magnificent seven here across 2014. We know what this one is because it's just been judged by Penny Williams, the Gondor Group winner, the American Cocker Spaniel. Nothing more to say on that, is there? It's a wonderful American Cocker Spaniel sent here by Penny Williams from today's big group, the Gondor Group. And that's what they're here to win. So our the first Kettle Memorial Trophy. For our best in show judge. Jack is judged here at Crafts. He's judged the pastoral group. He's also been uh, honored to judge the working group. And together with his wife Jo. He's uh, best so now our group judges are leaving the ring and we get down to the business of judging those no final seven no finalists for best in show. Jack also judges the Jack Bisman from Lancashire as well as has this enviable task of choosing the best in show at the world's greatest dog show. The atmosphere here, just tremendous, a full house to see this final judging, the culmination of four days of exquisite dog showing. And first up, we have the Rottweiler that came, of course, from the working group, judged by our co-commentator, commentator Frank Kane, who will join us in a minute. This is Brandon, three years old, owned by Robert and Donna Taylor, who also bred the dog. They come from Wakefield in West Yorkshire. Top male for 2013. And indeed, Frank joins us now. And there goes his working group winner. I think this is a splendid lineup. How do you think he's looking, Frank? Beautiful breed type and a great mover. I was very pleased with him downstairs. The Rottweiler, Brandon from the working group. Totally without exaggeration. Correct, beautiful head. Correct body proportions and great coat, and a fantastic so mover. Next for Jack Bisfam to look at, this Samoyed from the pastoral group. This is Dan the Man. 59 here out of an entry of 174. It's one best of breed. You've judged this one as well, haven't you, Frank? Yes, my best in show winner last December. He's a great dog, and again, another lovely mover. Full of breed type, beautiful head and dark pigmentation and expression. Beautifully made. Lovely animal owned by Val Freer and Sue Smith. Val comes from Lichfield in Staffordshire, Sue from Upwell in Cambridgeshire. What a proud moment for them. And it's uh, being handled in the ring by Sue. <laughs> Dan the man gave a, a look there that was just basically, yeah, you can carry on stroking me like that all day. <laughs> Smiling Sammy. They all do, don't they? It's a most wonderful expression they have. Accentuated, of course, by that lovely dark pigment on the crisp white coat. Beautiful condition, this dog. And the outline held on the move. That's always a sign of good construction and balance. No Sammy has ever won best in show here at Crufts. Neither has a Rottweiler. And that expression, so characteristic of the breed. Delightful. From Friday. Now, from the Terrier group, judged on Friday, this is the Wire Fox Terrier, two and a half year old King, owned by Ronnie and Denny de Munta, bred by uh, Warren, uh, bred by them as well, handled by, handled by Warren Bradley in the ring. They've come from Belgium to compete, but the dog lives here, doesn't it? Yes, he lives in Wales. Warren, who is handling, is a professional handler from Wales. He's got the dog in great condition. This is a dog which is oozes class, beautiful head. 
marvellous clean neck and shoulder, that crisp, wiry body coat. It's just exemplary for the breed. In the breed judging, he defeated last year's runner-up for top dog, and that was a rings packed deep to watch this, yes. Fabulous dog. Actually, it, it's interesting for me in that the very first Crufts that I attended, 1978, was won by a wire fox terrier. Could so that be an the, omen? The precision of the front movement, lovely. They don't have the far reach of some of the other breeds, but it's correct. They're narrow in the chest, they don't have the same forward reach. But absolute precision. Wonderful hind quarters driving him along there. That cleanness of neck into shoulder, short back, tail, bang on top, and some quarters behind the tail. That's part of the power of the dog. They always say with fox terriers, don't they, there should be a lot of dog behind the tail. Absolutely right. King and as we see him coming towards us, look at that gorgeous head. Second of our groups. At the moment, he's Friday king of the evening. ring. The Irish Wolfhound. They were judged by... Then from the hound group. The Irish Wolfhound, this absolute giant, the tallest of all breeds. James is his name, he's three years old. He comes from Belgium, a town called Ranst, owned by Jansen Schnellens, Gary that is, and Sandra. Strong bone and legs. And the most fantastic size and substance. These dogs are the real giants of the Hound group. But nonetheless, what we were so impressed by with this particular dog was his soundness, his free-flowing movement, but such a big animal. And light-footed, light-footed for his size and substance. Incredibly graceful he is. Well, could it be his year? The last time an Irish Wolfhound took best in show here at Crufts was 1960. This is a breed that should be curvy in outline. Wire-coated, that's protective, striding out well. He just looks a little bit tired tonight, Jessica, I thought. Not quite as sparkling as he was in the Hound group the other night. And, you know, performances can alter from night to night. Extension in the front. That lovely typey head, such a nice looking dog. Now, oh, this is the tip for the top, I think. The standard the poodle, both a UK so and American champion. Ricky is two and a half years old now, owned by Jason Lynn, John and Sandra Stone, and of course bred by Michael Gadsby and Jason Lynn, who have two contenders in this final seven tonight. What an achievement that is, quite remarkable. And we're looking here at a very particular clip. It's like an exaggeration of what was a working clip once upon a time, because, of course, poodles were water dogs. They needed the coat to protect them and to make them buoyant, but they also needed shorter coats, particularly on the hindquarters, so that they could swim. Yes, it's not just a fancy hairdo. It was a functional clip. Buoyancy from the mane over the front end, and the pom-poms guard the hocks from damage and the joints from damage and protect the end of the tail. So <laughs> they, a big stretch <laughs> there from Ricky, who says, yeah, you want me to run? I need to get my muscles sorted out first. Now, if you want carriage and style, this dog has it in buckets. Poodly One, action, they call it, don't they? His short back and long neck, arrogant and elegant in his couch. You know, it, it's X Factor. He's got the great ring presence, which says, defy me if you dare, Judge. You can't ignore me. Well, he's showing magnificently, isn't he? He really is, on top form. Well, so far, we've had five dogs, and this is the sixth Judge dog. Here. No bitches yet. This is the Pomeranian. Colin, what a lovely name for him. Lovely dog, two and a half years old. Came from Warsaw in Poland to take part in this. Bozina Borkowska and G. Por <laughs> I can't say this. Uh, Roszka, I think, is the, is the second, is the, the hyphenated part of the name there. This is the smallest of the Spitz breed. Spitz means that we've got wedge shaped head, sharp, small ears, tail set high and carried over the back and that harsh outer coat. They should be fine boned and dainty, but have good substance under the coat. And above all, this dog has great presence. 
great presence, completely unfazed and full of confidence. I always say they should look, this one's an orange, and he looks like a little Jaffa on legs. <laughs> He's won himself the most magnificent fan club as well. I'm sure Colin is not remotely aware that Twitter and Facebook have gone berserk with Colin fans. And why not? He's quite gorgeous, isn't he? And it is a long way round this ring, but he's game enough to trot round it. Absolute briskness in stride. <laughs> Great carriage. An Unbeaten uh, Preniera an is the registered name. Immaculate front movement here. You could look at the precision in that. And those little hawks driving him along. Cute as a button. The Pomeranian. Colin the Pom, all the way from Poland and taking the big ring by storm. It's not a very Polish name, is it? Colin. <laughs> Colin. <laughs> <laughs> now, here's our girl power in the ring tonight. This is the American Cocker Spaniel, show champion, Afterglow Pearls, a singer. Two years old, top gun dog in the UK last year, owned by Susan Crummy and Jason Lynn, bred by Mike Gadsby and Jason Lynn, handled by Susan in the ring tonight. Topped a, a good entry from all over Europe under, under Dale Vincent, the breed judge. And of course, she's known for her style, top gun dog in the United Kingdom last year. Now, of course, you're a breed specialist for the American Cocker Spaniel. What should we be looking for here? Here we're wanting a, you know, the top line of the American Cocker is sloping. It should slope with a high set tail, a lovely plush muscle, big nose there, and that dome skull and large dark eyes. She's full of breed type, but also she has showmanship and style on the move. Now, interestingly, the Afterglow Kennels, where they've got the Poodle here and the American Cocker, they've been best, a reserve best in show at Crufts on two previous occasions. Can they go one better and, and take the prize tonight? And we've got and two cracks at it, haven't they? Two shots at it. Absolutely. Yeah. Will it be the girl or the boy? Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, this is the only bitch in the line-up, this one. Well, she's put in a great performance, especially considering she's come straight from the gun dog group. Bred in Blackpool by Mike Gansby and Jason Lynn. I think the kennel's still there, isn't it? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. They get a nice run on the beach. These dogs get seriously mucky, you know. You wonder how they get them into this wonderful condition for the show. What a lineup! Jack Bisham having his walk down again. He's looked at the Rotty again. Taking another look at that lovely Sam Ed. This Doesn't wire that fox terrier. Fox terrier looks fantastic. That outline is gorgeous. Tiptoes of expectation, as the as the breed should be. And this, oh well, it's nearly as big as Jack, isn't it? The Irish Wolfhound. Here's Jason with the standard poodle, and then the tiny little Pomeranian, fluffy, bright <laughs> as can be. And today's favourite, of course, with the crowd. It's a big gun dog crowd here today. Now, I think perhaps he's going to look at them up and down on the move again before he makes his final decision. When you judged this a couple of years ago, Frank, did, did you know at this point or did you wait right till the end? Well, I was fairly, by this time, I was fairly sure of my best in show winner. I didn't know who the reserve was, not but you know, this is when you have that extra last look to decide those placings. So there goes Brandon. You must be proud of your group winner, I'm, Frank. I'm very happy. He looks really well. He's a lovely example of the breed. Comes from Wakefield in West Yorkshire. And a wonderful temperament. Handsome, strong. So there's the Rossi. And the balanced outline of that gorgeous Samoyed. This is Dan the Man. And, and of course, Jack, our judges, is, comes from the Pastoral Group. He and his wife, Joe, breed Fred Shetland sheepdogs for many years. So he'll be a specialist in these pastoral breeds. Yes, he liked the Shelties and the Rough Collies, didn't he? Was, uh, those are his breeds. And the little fox terrier here, the wirehaired fox terrier. Yeah, when I first came to Crofts, it was the first interview I did was with the winner. 
of a Fox Terrier. And here it is moving beautifully. I fancy this one from the start, actually. He looks magnificent tonight, and temperament absolutely beautiful, really composed and going well. It's a young dog, isn't it? Only two and a half years mm. old. The owners live in Belgium. He lives here. Beautifully handled. So our hound group winner will devour this ring in a very short number of paces. The Irish Wolfhound, James, all the way from Belgium. An unexpected, unexpected lengthening of their stay <laughs> for tonight. <laughs> yes, they had to cancel their ticket home. Neatly folded back ears. Lovely dense coat on top. Noble, magnificent of that head. Spectacular, beautiful. Well, standard poodles have been successful here at Crufts. The last time we had a winner, 2002. And the crowd, the crowd rises. <laughs> and to hear such cheers from an essentially a large gun dog crowd, tremendous. <laughs> Wonderful ring presence the dog has. And our little pom, Colin. Still very much on duty, <laughs> not remotely intimidated by the bigger boys. Does he know he's the smallest dog in the family? Absolutely he certainly doesn't. not. Toy dogs never do. They think they're giants. No idea of their size. All personality. And from the gun dog group tonight, we get another chance to look at the spectacular movement of this American Cocker Spaniel. She's such a beautiful bitch. Little Pearl, she's called. And what a great breeder's achievement to get two group winners in a Crufts final. I don't think that's ever been done before. No, we weren't sure whether it had been. It's, a, it's certainly a total rarity. Fantastic achievement. Well, Jack Vissman knows he's made his decision, he's called for the boards, here they come. The wonderful Kettle Memorial Trophy being brought out there, which goes to the Best in Show, and the Kennel Club Cup, which goes to the Reserve. Well, if the Pom wins it, it's smaller than the trophy. <laughs> this is a big moment for them. Last walk down the line, tense moments here. Wonderful moment for Jack Bisfam. Well, I think he's got a great line up there. He's got some good dogs to Aren't choose they from. Good? Aren't they good? And haven't they all shown well? Crops, best in show. It's the poodle, he's going for it. It's the standard poodle. Oh, my word. Brown's top dog of the year and Scruff's best in show winner too. And what a fantastic achievement for this kennel to have two in the final and take best in show at Cruff with a dog who has surely done just about everything that it's possible to do in the show ring. And it isn't over yet. Is it possible that the same couple could actually own the reserve as well? No, it's not going to be. It's, it's the winner of the pastoral group, <clears throat> the Sammy Ed. <laughs> that was so sweet. Dan Quickly shoving the treat away <laughs> so I can shake Dan your hand. Dan the Samo <laughs> takes reserve best in show. Well, with such a spectacular lineup. And what that a, is a marvellous result. Sporting handler. The first thing she thinks to do is to go and congratulate the winner. Well, that is marvellous. Well done, Jack. And we now have the presentation party coming into the ring. The presenter will be Mr. Lee Bansell, the global head, vice president, communications for pet care, health and grooming for Yukonuba. Mr. Lee Bansell, escorted by Professor Steve Dean, chairman of the Kennel Club. And there is also Russell Taylor, vice president of corporate marketing for Samsung UK. 
our principal sponsors and uh, Gerald King, the escort there. Well, this is just a splendid moment for Jason Lynn and for Mike Gadsby, who will be absolutely thrilled. Their partnership has bred some wonderful animals, two in the final lineup. One of them takes best in show. Ricky, the standard poodle, and let's grab a word with Jason Lynn, who owns this dog, co-bred him, handled him in the ring, and my word, didn't he do himself proud? I couldn't have asked anything more. He um, gave an absolutely beautiful performance, and I'm, I'm so proud of him. And this is his last ever show in the UK. That, that's right. He's now retired in the UK. Um, he was tough dog all breeds last year, and we decided that this would be his last show, and he's ended it in the most wonderful way possible. And the great thing about Ricky is he knows when he's on show and when to perform, and he knows when it's chill out time, and he's decided he's had enough. That is his trophy. I'm going to say a quick well done to Sue as well, because Sue is only a small breeder. Dan, the man's done a brilliant job, and you looked in shock when you were named reserve champion. Oh, it's an amazing feeling. I mean, I can't describe what the feeling's like, because, I mean... Well, you're at Crofts. <laughs> well, listen, you've done a great job. Many congratulations to Dan the Man and to our Crofts champion for 2014, Ricky the Standard Poodle. So here we are, the final seconds of Crufts 2014, the lap of honour from these two wonderful dogs with best in show, the standard poodle, Ricky. And in the reserve, we have that wonderful Sammy. And the crowd love this. What a wonderful, wonderful Crufts 2014 it has been. We hope you've enjoyed all our coverage of it. We've had an absolutely marvellous time here. Wherever you're watching in the world, and many of you will be watching in the farthest corners of the world, just a reminder that we'll be back here at Crufts in 2015. Thursday the 5th of March till Sunday the 8th of March. Those are the dates to remember. But there's still a lot more to come on YouTube in the next few weeks. We'll have behind-the-scenes videos. We'll have full replays of all the arena events, lots more best-of-breed judging videos, and full replays of the complete 2014 obedience competition from this Thursday, the 13th of March. All of that can be seen on www.youtube.com forward slash crufts. We've had a wonderful time. If you've been with us on the world feed, I'm sure you have as well. I hope you've enjoyed it tonight as much as we have. We'll be here next year. Goodbye.